This is a presentation of the paper Airborne Three-Dimensional Cloud Tomography by Aviad Levis, Yoav Shechner, Amit Aides, and Anthony Davis. Let's start with a familiar concept, rendering. Rendering uses a distribution of material, denoted here by beta, to produce images, denoted here by f of beta. We, on the other hand, seek inverse scattering, using multiple images to recover the scatter density, beta hat. Basically, we want to know how dense is this volume at every point. We do it in a huge outdoor field, acquiring multi-view images from a high-altitude aircraft. With these images, we recover the scatter distribution within a cloud. Now let's put this problem into context with respect to these three imaging fields, medical imaging, computer vision, and remote sensing. Computer vision typically looked for recovery of background objects or scenes, assuming single scattering in a homogeneous medium. We deal with a more general problem, accounting for all orders of scattering to recover a spatially varying medium. Often, it's the medium itself that is important, and this is the case for tomography. In medical CT, Small-scale and controlled radiation enable a simple direct transmission model, which is an exponential decay with beta. But where does this energy go? Some of it may get scattered into different directions. We, on the other hand, use this multiply scatter signal to recover the volume. We don't control the radiation, and we do it on a large scale. We define and solve multi-scattering tomography. We focus on the atmosphere. Why? because this can give insights into nature and climate. It's also very important for pollution monitoring and aviation safety. If you may remember this Icelandic eruption that caused Europe's airports to shut down. Now, active illumination can be used for remote sensing. However, this gives local measurements. We, on the other hand, seek global measurements, which is why we use passive instruments relying on the sun as the radiation source. So what is done in state-of-the-art remote sensing? There, the atmosphere is assumed to be made of uniform layers, resulting in a 1D problem. This model simplifies multiple scattering computations. However, anyone who looks up to the sky can see that this is inaccurate, since the atmosphere is actually three-dimensional. We recover the atmosphere as it should, a 3D volumetric distribution. Now, one prior study did consider a 3D medium, a symbol single scattering to perform tomography. We generalize this notion to multiple scattering tomography. Let's formulate the inverse problem. We fit an image formation model to multi-view measurements. And before I describe how we solve this, I want to talk about the image model. In single scattering, only sunlight scatters into the line of sight. However, in multiple scattering, not only sunlight scatters, but rather light traveling around in the 3D domain. So for a given atmosphere beta, the image model, F, forms the images as viewed by the imaging system, in this case, the satellite. These images are in fact samples of the five-dimensional light field at specific points and angles. The light field expresses radiance flow in the domain. So what is the light field? Let's examine the light field at this point and direction. In single scattering, there is the direct component, which is this exponential decay, and the scattered component, which is made of the sunlight reaching point x prime times the optical density of this point, which means how much of the light will interact with particles at this point. This is multiplied by the fraction of light that is scattered into this specific direction and the attenuation up until point x. Now this factor is integrated throughout the line of sight over x prime to give the single scattered component. So what about the multiple scattering? As we said, it's no longer just sunlight that is scattered, but rather light coming from every direction. Now this term defines scattering of incoming light from one specific direction, and integrating it over all angles gives the total amount that is scattered into the line of sight at x prime. This quantity j defines another five-dimensional field, which is called the scatter field. And the relation between these two fields, i and j, is defined by the radiative transfer equation, which was formulated decades ago. Now this is a recursive relation, because i depends on j, and j depends on i. And it can be solved numerically, but however, it's time-consuming. 
And for more details on the specific method we use to solve this, please see our paper. Now remember that F is a sampling of I, and this is the image formation model that we use. So going back to the inverse problem, the question is how do we solve this minimization? A typical approach uses a gradient based method, and this was done in previous work, however, for a homogeneous medium with hundreds of unknowns. We have an unknown at every voxel. How can we scale this up and move on to half a million of unknowns? The gradient is just too complex to compute. Why is it complex to compute? Because if you consider a small perturbation to the parameters, a small change in the optical density at one voxel, then in theory this should affect the entire light field, meaning that the light field needs to be recursively computed for every degree of freedom. And this is computationally prohibitive. So how do we solve this for many unknowns? If we look back at the image formation model, we can see that for a fixed J, this is no longer a recursive relation, but rather this is a simple function of beta, only through the exponential and multiplicative factors. This makes this minimization, given J, fast to compute. With this in mind, we devise the following iterative approach. We start with an initial guess, beta zero, and compute J zero solving a forward recursive problem. Now let me remind you that this part is time consuming. With this fixed J0, we update beta solving an inverse non-recursive problem, which is very fast to compute. Using the newly estimated beta, we can then re-update J and iterate until convergence. Now, an important note is this approach is not atmospheric related and can be applied to any imaging setup where scattering media are considered. To test this approach in a realistic setting, we used a large eddy simulated cloud field, which is a physically realistic cloud field. We focus on these two test cases, the cloud in green and the cloud in red, and for both we render nine views as if seen by an airborne instrument. On the right you can see the LES ground truth distribution, and notice that we have up to 300,000 grid points, which is our unknowns to recover. And this is the recovery using our approach. I'm going to show this again. This is the ground truth, and this is the recovery. Now a few points about this recovery. First, this is the first realization of multiple scattering tomography. In both clouds, we used an initial guess of zero cloud, and the recovered solution was able to get the correct shape and order of magnitude. About limitations. Firstly, the converged solution depends on an initial condition, and this is because the problem is non-convex. Another limitation is that the recovery is inhibited in clouds which are too optically thick, and this is because at some point there is almost no signal coming from within a cloud. Now lastly, I want to describe an outdoor experiment. The question is, how can we acquire multi-views for such a huge outdoor field? In a previous work down in our group, a network of synchronized hemispherical field camera was deployed outdoors to recover the shape of clouds. This setup, if radiometrically calibrated, could be used to perform a volumetric recovery. In this work, however, we used images acquired from a high-altitude aircraft, carrying the Air MISP instrument developed at NASA's JPL. On the left you can see how a nadir image looks like. We focused on this cloud to recover 84,000 unknowns, and this time we had no ground truth. We used cross-validation, leaving out one angle from the optimization process to recover the cloud. We then used the recovered cloud to render the left out image and compare it to the acquired image. Now to sum up, there are three points that I want you to take home. First, we define multiple scattering tomography. Second, we make it tractable. And this could find application in other imaging fields where scattering media are considered. The last point is embedded in these three images. There is a large research effort to understand climate change and the mechanisms involved, clouds being one of them. Unfortunately, there are many unknowns. Hence, I urge everyone to step out of the lab and start imaging nature. Thank you.